Okay, I want to describe for you just some perspective on all of these names that we have of features related to bones. Sometimes this is a little confusing for students as they get started because so many of these names are new to them. One of the um, helpful ways to visualize the, these features and the, all of these names of the features is to divide them into a couple of categories. Let me show you what I mean here. Um, when you deal with a bone, um, every bone in the human body has a general shape to it. It might be a flat bone, it might be a rod-like bone, um, a long bone, it might be a blocky bone, a short bone. But every bone is going to have a general shape to it. Um, either sticking out from that are going to be a number of features, or perhaps on the surface of the bone are going to be a number of features. Um, I'm going to take a bone like, say, the femur, which is basically just a long rod-like bone. Now, added to that basic shape of the bone is this angled head and neck. Now, a head and a neck is a description or a whole feature. If you point to the neck on your body, you can point from many, many different directions because your neck is a whole object. So is your head. You can point to the back of your head, the top of your head, the side of your head, the front of your head. The whole object is a head, and any number of features on a bone are going to be whole features, features that can be viewed from any side of the bone. Um, on the femur, if you know it, there's a big lump-like uh, portion sticking out from the bone. It's like 180 degrees from the head, and a smaller, lesser trochanter there as well. Um, these are prominent because they have a different structure, a different shape from the general body, what we would call the body of the bone, the main body. Down at the distal end of the femur are the two big condyles that stick out. And you can, you can detail other features that stick out there, but these are whole objects that you can see from the front or the back of the bone. Um, if you know the tibia, the tibia is similar. It's a long um, sort of rod-shaped bone. Um, it also has two whole features at its proximal end. Um, they're not shaped quite so round as this. They're a little bit more like this, but they're still referred to as condyles. You can see them from the front, and you can see them from the back. Um, it also has a, a very prominent little hook down at, on the medial side of its distal end. So when you're looking at a bone and you're trying to study its features, you want to see a number of the features that you're going to learn as whole objects that can be seen from any angle, front, back, sides, wherever. Now contrast this with some of the features you're going to learn that are typically surface features. They may just be on one side of the bone or the other. Um, for example, on the femur, on the posterior side is something called the linea aspera. It's sort of a ridged line that runs down the back. Um, the anterior side of the tibia has a crest. And both bones have tuberosities, uh, roughened areas that stick up from the bone. The, the roughened surface is something where a muscle is attached, but you're only going to see this on the posterior side of the femur or the anterior side of the tibia. If you turn those bones around, you won't see these. Um, also on the posterior side of, say, the femur down at the distal end, there's a deep fossa. A fossa is only going to be seen on one side of the bone or the other. So here is a way to just think about the features that you find on a bone and the fact that some of them are going to be whole structures that are easily seen from any angle, whereas some of the other features that we're describing and learning are simply surface features.